Hey guys, it's Ellen here and today's Monday, so that's Mini Monday Madness Day. We're doing a mini wine and cheese. This is kind of based off a big tutorial I did on Patreon. Uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, you can go check it out. It's a place people go and support my channel and you get exclusive tutorials on Thursdays as well as traceables that go with my YouTube um, tutorials. Check it out right here. Um, this particular Monday Mini Monday Madness has a traceable on Patreon, so you can go check it out. Uh, if not, I'd still teach you how to draw it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. And let's get painting. Okay, for this um, particular tutorial, I'll go over my supplies. I have the three inch square Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I tear it, I just hand tear it. I, people ask me how do I get the edges like this? You just fold it and then just tear it. It's pretty simple. Um, I have my paper towel, my brushes. I'll be using Princeton 8 and number 4 long round. I'll have my water jars, my paints, and they're always in the description box. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. Um, if not, I can just kind of quickly show you how to draw a the wine and cheese. Basically, a wine bottle. You can think of like, you know, kind of a rectangle, just like that. But then you curve the bottom. Right, and then you kind of go in a little bit, just a little bit like this, and then you have another kind of rectangle here, just two lines parallel, and then you get curve over here for the neck, another little one up top, and another one like that, and then for the wine bottle, I mean the wine glass, it's kind of like think of a smiley face, smile, <laughs> and then you're doing like a little skinny oval. A little skinny oval and then just kind of go down with the stem and then for the cheese it's just a triangle right triangle and then you put the rectangle here the triangle meet the rectangle and then grapes you guys can draw grapes they're just like like that and then you get your wine and your cheese maybe this glass would be a little bit bigger but that's pretty much how you do it so here we are with a three inch square i'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit and go over the paints as I use them. So I've got the traced trace on here. Um, people who don't know how to trace them too, you take basically a piece of graphite paper. If you don't have graphite paper, you can use a light box. You put it on top, you put your traceable on top of that, and you trace on top of that. That's how I do that. Put that over there somewhere. So we're gonna do the wine bottle first. And that's, this is kind of based off the um, the, the real big tutorial I have on Patreon, which is this one. Yeah. Um, you can go check it out. If you're a Patreon member, you can just obviously download that and use that. But this is going to be a tiny version. So we're going to use our Princeton 8 long round, get some water on it. We're going to grab some crimson. I have alizarin crimson. We're going to make that burgundy color. going to grab some Prussian blue. I guess purple. I have more crimson. Right, and I'm gonna grab a little burnt umber, Get that brown, and I keep doing the three of these, maybe a little more Prussian blue. Get that really deep burgundy color, and you always like to test it if it's too purpley, purpley. I don't know. Can add a little bit of paint gray too, just to darken up a little bit more. See, and if you want to make it more red tone. Gonna keep adding the three just till I get the consistency. So the consistency is a little more creamier, less water. There we go. We want it on the deep side. And then we're gonna just take our brush that has that creamy tex texture and I'm gonna put it in the water jar and then tap it on my paper towel so I take off some of it. If it makes any sense, I don't know, but and now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to dip it in the water because it's too thick. There we go. So we're going to just fill the bottle. We're not going to do, don't worry about if you um, mess up, really just don't. We're going to end up using some gouache and stuff later. So I'm just going to fill this bottle in like this. Oh, excuse me. I made a mistake already. The neck is supposed to be green, so I'll just remove the, the burgundy right there. Okay. I don't know why I didn't draw the neck in. 
and show you how to draw the neck in. So it's basically stop here. So this is a rectangle. <laughs> Already I made a big mistake. You see, Mondays are your fun days. So I might leave a little couple of white halos. I might paint over them, but see this color right now, we have this nice um, lighter burgundy color. And we'll go back over that, make it a little bit darker with the paint we have already mixed. Just filling this in. And it's wet still. So while it's wet, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Can I zoom in more? There we go. Grab the thicker paint. It's gonna kind of bleed going straight down. Same thing here. At the tip of this brush on the outer edge. Is it that darker color? Go back again. I'm gonna do it down the bottom here. Especially where the cheese is. Because it's in front of it, it's giving a shadow to it. Again, darker paint. Look at that. It's coming to life already, guys. Even dark. I can go and grab some of this Payne's Gray and go right in here. See how I just grab that and put that right on this edge. And then down to the bottom here, right where the cheese is. Isn't that cute? <laughs> you already feel like it's wine, right? Go back in here again. So we're gonna leave that. Now we're gonna mix up our neck. That's a green color, it's like a dark green. So we'll take our yellow, cabin yellow deep. I'm gonna clean up my brush, it's really full paint. I have to activate this color. And I'll grab some Prussian blue, like this deep green. Might add a little burnt umber to it. This nice dark green. Put that on my brush. And we're gonna fill in that neck. Just like this. I'm leaving a little white halo right there on the side. You see that? Don't fill it all the way in. Oops, I got some of my wine. Oh no. <laughs> it's tiny, so and then you fill in this part up here of the bottle. At this point, I'm going to add some more Prussian blue. I want it darker. A little more of that brown. Get that darker color. It's going to tippy tap like that. Just like this. Tippy tap. See? While we still have the burgundy color, we're gonna go do the, the wine glass. So same thing, we're gonna just get a little bit, add a little water to that creamy color we have. See, in the glass so you can see. And we're just gonna fill in this part, the whole thing. And then we'll let that dry and we'll go back in and we'll fill in the bottom area. Let that dry. All right, we can work on our pretty grapes and the cheese. We'll do the grapes first. So the grapes would be like a light green. You could do burgundy grapes if you want, but I'm gonna do light green grapes. Yellow, we could just take the green we have up here, already mixed, just grab some of that. There we go, light green grapes. Not so much water because we're working tiny here. And we're just gonna fill in. Now you can leave little white halos. It's gonna be tiny. I could use my number four brush maybe at this point 
if you're having difficulty. I'm going to try and keep continuing with the number eight, but the four might give you better control because it's tiny. It's going to force you to be take your time with it. So I'm filling in a bunch of them. Some are totally filled in, some are not. And you know what, guys, don't worry if they're not, if there's a little white spot missing, we can go back in and we can just put some gouache. So we're just gonna fill these grapes in with the light color first. I kind of find it more restrictive with the smaller brush. I don't know about you. I think I'm going to fill them in and then use the gouache. Be cheaty. Be very cheaty. Um, the little brown stem. Just grab some burnt umber. The little stem out here. I didn't draw that, but. And there's a little stem in here. There. Meanwhile, back at the farm. Let's test if this is dry. It's still wet. I'm going to go and do our little blue cheese. <laughs> the top will be like a yellowish beige. So you can take your... Let me just fix up the screen. First of all, let's just use the green up while we can. I'm going to take that dark green. I'm going to go back over this again. Just a little bit with paint gray. And you're done with that. Okay. Gonna move some of the screen out of the way so we can get the beige in there. Okay, I have burnt umber. A little, little yellow to that. And that's the color we want. Water it down so it's pale. I always tap it on the paper towel, so get rid of the excess. See? And I'm gonna take that color. So it's like 50-50 almost. And we're just going to do the top of the cheese. Now, on this color, we can start to add a little more darker brown. Mix with a little Payne's Gray. And we're just going to tap some of that in here on the edges. Just like that. Tip, 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 tippy tap. Now for the blue cheese, it's gonna be mostly white with some blue. Um, you can grab your Prussian blue. And whatever gray you have, if you have a paint gray or whatever, put the gray over here so you can see the blue and the gray. It's kind of a combo of the two. So it's basically this loose, loosey goose kind of Thing. So just take some water and put it on that area. This mine's a little gray now. I'm going to clean it off. You want it damp, not super wet. And you're going to take your blues and your grays. Just going to tap it in the beginning just sporadically like that. Grab some gray. Doing little teeny taps. Just really tiny because what's see is starting to really bleed. As it dries, you can get a little bit thicker with the paint, less water. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit because when it's getting really starting to bleed too much, we're gonna go back to the glass. So while we have gray. Some of this pants gray over here. Just take your brush and we're gonna go down the side of the glass. Both sides, outer rim. Where it'll be pencil lines. Just like so. And then we're gonna put a little line in between in the middle here of the glass.
just like that. Let's get the darker burgundy now that it's dry. Grab that. And we're just going to do this part. So you make this curve under here. And we're going to fill that in like so. This part will be a little bit darker than the last part. You can put a little, a little bit darker, but not too much in here. Trying to keep that one a little bit light. Go back in again, the darker color. So you know that it's kind of got that curve to it. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna take that same brown that we had for the cork, for the, the cheese kind of thing up here for the cork. Voila. Okay, now this is pretty almost dry. So you can go back in with the, the blues and the grays. And just do this wiggles, squiggles for the blue cheese. See, just doing these wiggles, swiggles. <laughs> and then add some grays doing the same thing. You can go overboard. Don't go too overboard. Get a little bit darker where the grapes are. There you go. And the grapes, we're just going to go back in and get a little bit darker green. So I've mixed the yellow with some peacock blue. I still want to keep it on the bright side, bright and light. If you want to throw in a little Prussian blue and make it a little bit darker. But I'm just going to go in here and add a little, look a little bit darker. Right here, just some dark greens on that inside part. Just to round them out. It's a loose kind of like looking grape. You don't have to make it so serious. I'm gonna go in and add just like a dark color in here in between the spaces. I just grab some Payne's gray and that will just highlight the light grapes. You know, it's very it's a tiny painting, so don't get all crazy about it. I'm going to go back in with the tan color, get a little bit darker. So the shadow here. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. So now this is dry. I'm going to take a paint's gray that we have. I have all my grays over here. It's a mess. But whatever paint's gray you have, water it down. Watering it down. And we're going to do this swipe with the brush. Hold it kind of as on its side. Swipe down. Swipe. Swipe. Oh, got a little too much pink. See that little swipe over the color? There. I have some blackish kind of burgundy color going back here again. Get darker here. Just a couple of splotches next to that halo we made. And I'm just going to fix that neck area. Now for the table, it could be a brown table. It doesn't have to be any kind of type table. I might just take some of this burnt umber. Make a simple table color. Really loose. You don't even have to do that. And I just put one in. And of course, I'll add some darker colors to it, like Payne's Gray, Prussian Blue. Get 
this darker color. And while I'm, it's still damp, I just tap it in here underneath the, the cheese and the grapes. See, got the dark color right under the cheese and the grapes and the wine. Just kind of in this section here. The rest can be light. Go back in again, get more concentrated color of the brown, a little gray or a little Prussian blue. And I'm gonna go back in here. If it starts to bleed out way too much, just take your brush, clean it off, and just lift up some paint. See that? Look how cute, right? And go back in with the glass, some darker burgundy color right here. Now, at this point, you're gonna take some, that's what we're gonna have to let that dry. You can still go in and finesse the grapes, you know. Um, I might take a little dark color, go around some grapes. But really don't get too bogged down by it because it's just, they're so tiny. And it's very suggestive of the grapes. We all kind of know it's grapes and you can kind of go back in and make your blue cheese a little darker in some areas. But pretty much that's it. We're gonna grab some white gouache. I have white gouache over here. I might grab a new one because that's dried out. I'm gonna finish this up. So, just get a little water on it. I always tap it on my paper towel. And we're gonna do this wash. Yep. See, really loose dry brush kind of technique. And down here, so it's kind of opaque. I mean, excuse me, translucent a little bit. And then we'll do a little bit here on the glass. Don't try not to go too overboard because it can be easily gone overboard. And there we go. With the number four, you want to take your brush, or if you can't, if it's too tight, dark gray, go back into the glass. Just add a little darker color here and there. Just to finesse this a little bit. The rim. Just like that. Just a little finessing. And you can go back in here. I'm adding like a little deep blackish gray going around the grapes a little more. And then, oh, yes, the gouache on the grapes. So then the grapes, you just take a little teeny brush here and the white halo on the grapes. See that? Well, curve it. That's how you do it without having to worry about leaving the white space for the grapes. And if you've got too dark on your cheese, you can go add a little bit of highlights. But pretty much that's it. And if this dried too light, you can go back in again. Add a dry brush, highlight. That's it, guys. <laughs> Oops. It's our mini wine and cheese from Mini Monday Madness. Have any questions, leave them in the comment section. This was fun, wasn't it? Just take your time. It's a little wine and cheese. <laughs> it's on my mind because we're planning a trip to um, wine country in the fall um, as we go see our Marine graduate who's Marine School. Um, my husband's gonna go visit places that he represents and so I'm gonna tag along. So it's on my mind all weekend. <laughs> so I did some wine and cheese. Again, like I said, uh, tweak it like when I'm, when you're, you know, I'm just talking to you, but when you go back in and you can tweak this and make this a little bit darker. I'm not going to sit there and do all this stuff for you guys. You guys can figure this out. Just a little bit in here. Just tweak that. 
just to give it a little oomph. But you guys can figure this out. You guys are pretty smart. So again, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the Traceable. If not, you know, I showed you how to draw it. And uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, where I have exclusive tutorials there on weekly. And it's just a place people can go and uh, support my channel, which I appreciate. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this mini Monday madness. And take care, and I'll speak to you soon.